both of us, the Israeli and Palestinian mothers, understand deeply that we have the same target. We are connected so deeply. And we know that this connection is the hope for our region because it's such a hell in these days. And we know we need each other to bring a new future for our children, for our grandchildren, for the coming generations. And it's very, very difficult in these days, but I admire the courage and determination of my partners, Rim Khajajra. I was so proud to stand by her in uh, LA uh, 10 days ago when we were nominated as Women of the Year of the Time magazine. Mm. I felt so honorable. And thank you, thank you, dear Rim, for, for your courage, your. I admire you, really. I admire your uh, determination, the way you are yes. enable us to feel sisters. And in our society, it's also quite, quite difficult in these days. Many people feeling so deep in their personal sadness. And we have, all of us, we have to take our hands and to look at the others and to understand that we have to see that there are no two sides for this conflict. There is one side of mothers that want to hug and grow up their kids to fulfill their dreams. Absolutely. Uh, Rafa is a small city in southern Gaza and around 1.5 million Palestinians have been displaced there in very cramped and horrible conditions. Then there's the looming threat of further Israeli aggression or as Israel threatens with ground invasion of Rafah. So Reem, uh, I would like to ask, uh, put my next question to you with feminine and the threat of a ground invasion looming. How are the women faring in the camps of Rafah and the rest of Gaza under this uh, constant fear of further displacement and enforced evacuation, especially with the holy month of Ramzan having set in? Uh, tell us about the situation on the ground in Rafa. One issue for the in the Tarqit and we have to be able to get to the ground. In the case of the Gaza and the world of Gaza, the people who live in Gaza, which is more than 2.5 million, and especially in the south of Gaza, the world is very, very, سيء للغاية لدرجة أنه في مجاعة محتملة يعني في أي وقت في قلة موارد غذائية الوضع ما بتحملش إلا تدخل دولي لوقف الحرب على غزة وإنقاذ أرواح المدنيين هناك وهذا الإشي اللي من ناشد فيه عمالنا أنا ويعهل كل الدول العالم اللي بنزورها أنه الوضع المأساوي اللي في غزة أو الوضع الإنساني المأساوي في غزة بدل على كارثة حقيقية بحق البشرية واللي من طلب كمان إنه بدل الشعوب ما بتوقف مع طرف ضد طرف لازم يوقفوا كلهم لإنهاء الحرب ووجود حل سلمي للمنطقة بشكل عام. Yes, uh, women uh, are the last ones to eat while children are the first ones to die. Uh, this is what is being said about what is happening in Gaza right now. And they are exhausted, women are exhausted. They have these added responsibilities of having to look after the wounded um, children, male members of the family, while they themselves are underfed, dehydrated, without he uh, healthcare facilities. Jail, uh, childbirth is taking place without painkillers, C sections without anesthesia. Mothers are breastfeeding without having eaten for days. That's the shocking reality of Gaza today. The UN agency has said that women are giving birth without basic medical assistance and lack menstrual hygiene products and privacy in exceptionally unsanitary living conditions. With fuel, medicine, water, and hospital supplies diminished, pregnant women are among the most affected, uh, certainly doubly disadvantaged, 
Tell us about whatever little help reaches these women, if at all, and if organizations like yours, with the help of Women of the Sun, uh, if they are doing anything to provide relief to pregnant and lactating women. Women are paying the highest prices of this terrible, terrible war. Really, it's so unneeded. It's so awful. It's hell. It's hell. And actually, we had the initiative to build a hospital on the border for, for women in pregnant. We didn't succeed to do it, but we will continue because we think is that the the women connection between the borders that's the highest responsibility of all of us. What but we are seeing this with the same idea of stopping and finishing this terrible conflict we are doing also in our parliament by demanding our parliament member to finish this terrible situation and to find a horizon of political solution to this so long conflict with the Palestinian. This issue is making such big problems for all the citizens in this area. And we know the women are the most sensitive and painful, that paying such unhuman price. And we are making our best to stop this hell. All right. You know, uh, our Vivian Silver, she was murdered in the first day mm. of the, on the 7th of October. And four days, three, actually three days before, she was with us with hundreds of Palestinian and Israeli women and many women all over the world. And we shouted. In this that's, that's conflict, really and Vivian said, we can't continue in this terrible way, and that's what's happening now. So mm -hmm. we know it's our mission, it's our duty to continue as hard as possible, as with full with courage and determination to continue this path for negotiation, for political agreement, because there is no other way that all of us can live here together with peaceful and security. Oh.